What is up guys? Welcome back to another horror franchise tier list ranking. And now we are at my third franchise, which is going to be one that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, if you can't figure it out by now, it's a child's play franchise. Chucky time, baby. Yes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight movies. And I'm also going to include the recent season one, at least of the TV series. I figured that would be fun to throw in here. Wouldn't normally do that for a regular ranking, but for a tier list, it makes more sense. So the categories are as follows from best to worst. We've got friends to the end. We have good guy. We have hide the soul. Batteries not included. And Ade Due, dumb as hell. So if you guys are finding me for the first time, I'm a gigantic fan of the Child's Play franchise. Child's Play and Nightmare on Elm Street are my two favorites. And so I have very passionate, passionate opinions on this franchise. So let's kick it off without further ado with the original Child's Play. And as much as I adore this movie, I gotta put it in good guy. I don't quite think it's friends to the end level for me. I think that Tom Holland does an amazing job with this movie, with the direction. Uh, Don Mancini did the original script. It was retooled quite a bit. You know, it wasn't 100% his original idea. But between him and Tom Holland and th that collaboration that came through in this first movie, we gave birth to one of my favorite franchises of all time. Uh, I love the original um set up between young Andy and his mother and the cop that killed Charles Lee Ray. I love the fact we actually get to see Charles Lee Ray in this movie with uh, Brad Dorff. I, I love Brad Dorff. I think that he's incredible, not only as a voice actor, but as an actor especially. So I love getting ever to, to see his character in this one. So pretty good kills here. Really the only thing that holds this movie back for me, it's the only thing that holds it back, is that because it's the first one, they didn't quite realize what they had with Chucky. Chucky's great in this one. Chucky's got some great moments, but it's too onward where he's really unleashed. So in retrospect, I always enjoy going to some of the sequels more than I enjoy going back to the first film. Now we're at Child's Play 2, and you guys already know this is absolutely friends to the end for me. This is not only one of my favorite horror sequels, it's one of my favorite movies period. Everything that they did great in the first film is done better in the second film. Chucky is arguably at his best in this one. Amazing one-liners, really good kills. I think that Alex Vincent is a lot better in the role of Alex. You know, he's grown a little bit more, got a little bit more experience, so I think he's much better in the second film. I love the addition of Christina Lee's McCarthy as Kyle. Uh, for a character that before recently was only in one movie, she's always been one of the fan favorites. There's a reason for that. She's a great character. And I love the whole third act in the uh, the Toy Factor. I think it's one of the best third acts of any slasher film. So th there's hardly anything, if nothing, negative that I can say about this one. I think Child's Play 2 is a perfect Child's Play film. Now we're at the red-headed stepchild of the franchise, and that is Child's Play 3. And guys, I don't understand what a lot of your issues are with Child's Play 3. Admittedly, I have a big place in my heart for it because it was the first horror movie I ever saw. It's the reason why I became a horror fanatic, and so I'll always love it for that. But even taking it on its own merits, I think that this is a damn good Chucky movie. So it's going up to friends to the end. I'm sorry. Cry about it. Get mad about it. For me, it's top tier Chucky, top tier Child's Play. I think that it's a hard argument between two and three, but I think that three is possibly the best Chucky one-liners in the entire franchise. There's some really great kills in this one, some funny kills as well. I actually like the slight change of pace here with the grown-up Andy. Uh, they did it a year later, so obviously it's not Alex Vincent. They handed it over to Justin Whalen, who was an actor that I liked quite a bit when I was growing up in the, in the 90s. And I like the, the, the fact that he has to kind of become the protector this time around. You know, Chucky's got his eyes set on somebody else, and he has to be the one to kind of intervene. I like the military school background. I, I think that all kind of changes up the formula a lot. The biggest criticism that I always hear about part three is that it's just same old, same old. We're just doing the same thing over again, which you could pretty much say against every slasher franchise. Why the fuck is that Child's Play 3's crossed a bear? But nonetheless, even if you say that, I think that Child's Play 3 changes up the formula a decent amount. So uh, I really love this movie. I don't get a whole lot of the complaints with it. And it's got Again, hard argument between two and three, but an amazing, amazing third act that might be the best in the franchise with that whole theme park setting and Chucky getting his face cut off. Definitely the best death of Chucky in the entire franchise. So I'm a sucker for this movie. It's always been one of my favorites, and it's my friend to the end. Deal with it. 
Now we have Bride of Chucky. This was the first Chucky movie that I ever saw in the theaters. And from day one, I have always loved this. I know that there's a bit of a love or hate aspect to it because it is much more of a horror comedy. It's much more um, trying to be a, a little bit of a, a dark comedy in a way instead of a horror film, straight up slasher film. But I love that about it. This one, again, going right up to Friends to the end for me. The whole franchise isn't going to be there, I promise. But uh, yeah, they had a hell of a run here with 2, 3, and 4 because Bride of Chucky, the introduction of Tiffany is such a risky thing. I mean, there's not many if any other slasher franchises that try to introduce somebody else to share, if not overshadow the, the screen time of the, the main killer. And Tiffany does awesome in that role. Jennifer Tilly is amazing as human Tiffany and as the doll Tiffany in Bride of Chucky. I, I love her interaction with Brad Dorif. I love the, the marital banter, the back and forth. I think all of the comedy in this movie really does hit. I, it's the funniest of the franchise by far. And you still have some damn good kills. Like Ronnie Yu is just a really fun horror director. It's the guy that did this. And he also did Freddy vs. Jason, which I'm a big fan of. His movies were just fun. Had an awesome soundtrack too. Fucking Judas Priest and everything on there. It was badass. So not a whole lot negative about this movie. The only thing that I could say that it kind of falters on a bit is that the Jesse and Jade character aren't really all that compelling, but they're really only there just to be a counterpoint to the relationship of Chucky and Tiffany. So I don't think they were meant to be all that significant in the film anyway, so it doesn't bother me too much, but uh, I, I love Bride of Chucky. For, there was a time there where Bride of Chucky was my favorite of this franchise. I would say two is right now, but there was a time there where it was my favorite. Oh boy, now we're at Seed of Chucky, and uh, I, it, it has not aged well for me. And it wasn't very good the first time that I saw it. Ade Due, dumb as hell. I'm sorry, I've given this movie probably seven or eight chances, which is more than most people have given it. And I, I simply don't get it. I, I simply don't get it. Uh, the most respectful way that I can say how much I despise this movie is that it's the one movie in this franchise that I will willingly skip over and not miss whatsoever. Uh, I just don't like what Don Mancini went for here. You know, this was the first movie that he had complete creative control and he was the writer as well as the director. And he's gone on since to do a lot of ideas that I have enjoyed. But this one just start to finish is just a bunch of question marks for me. I don't really think that the Chucky and Tiffany dynamic is anywhere near as fun or as well written as it was in Bride of Chucky. Uh, I think that, you know, Chucky's still Chucky. That's the one thing that I can say about this. I always get that famous question, what's worse, Seed of Chucky or Freddy's Dead? And I always say Freddy's Dead's worse because at least in Seed of Chucky, Chucky is Chucky. He's not a fucking cartoon character. But I don't really think that the Tiffany writing or the Chucky writing is anywhere near the... The, the, the level that I expect from this franchise. There's some gory kills, like the gore's turned up a decent amount, so there is some carnage there. The Glenn slash Glenda character, I, I mean, like, I understand um, recently, not, not super recently, but over time there's been more explanation given, more, more from the fan base, that this is a character that's speaking more towards, you know, the, the transgender community and things like that. And so there are a, a group of people that really do love this character and cherish this character and gets what Don Mancini was trying to do for it. And I totally respect that. I just simply did not get it myself. Uh, I didn't think that the the humor intended most of all with the character really landed for me. I mean, it's a character that is consistently pissing his pants throughout the movie and uh, the way that they swap between the two characters in certain times just didn't really add anything to it for me. So just from my own skewed perspective, I couldn't really identify with the character, of course. Uh, but I didn't really just think that the, 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 the humor, if anything else, with that character that was intended just was executed very well. So I could go on and on and on about this movie. I'm going to leave Seed of Chucky alone. You guys know I don't like it. Uh, it's just a movie that I just simply don't get. Next up, we have Curse of Chucky, which is the first movie that went to VOD. And this was a movie that I had no faith in, not only because of my experience with Seed of Chucky, but because... Traditionally with movie franchises, especially horror franchises, once you leave the theater and go to straight to DVD, straight to VOD, you're fucked. Like your quality is just, you're gone. And shame on me because Curse of Chucky was damn good and I'm putting it in good guy. I think that it is a really good child's play movie. I was surprised, genuinely surprised at how awesome of a job Don Mancini did with this movie. Not only as a writer, but as a director, he did a lot of like 
Uh, I got a lot of Hitchcockian vibes from it. I don't know if that's what is intended. He's got a lot of classic horror love, so he tries to do a lot of um, homages to classic directors. Mostly Brian De Palma seems to be one of his favorites. But uh, the way that they have it all take place in this house got a very like psycho vibe to me. But Chucky, it, it goes back to its roots. It goes back to the approach of the first movie where Chucky is in POV. He's in the shadows. You don't really see him. He's not the star of the show for a while. And the new character brought in of Nika, played by Fiona Dorif. Again, I had a lot of cynicism towards that because I had never seen her act before. And I was just like, oh, they're just casting her because she's Brad Dorif's daughter. I wonder if she's any good. And she's awesome. She's one of the best characters in this franchise. And so, uh, so many things about this just genuinely surprised me uh, and so pleasantly. And it's still one of my favorites with the kills. Uh, the way there's a great scene with the dinner table where somebody has poison chili and you don't know who it is. And the way that they shoot it and cut between it. Don Mancini did a great job with that as well. And uh, there's a, like a twist somewhere in the movie regarding where in the timeline this movie fits that was a nice surprise as well. It doesn't quite hit top tier just for you know some of the characters and a little bit of the writing here and there, but nonetheless, I really do enjoy Curse of Chucky. And now we are at Cult of Chucky, which was the VOD follow-up to Curse of Chucky. And me and the rest, pretty much, of the Child's Play fan base were on cloud nine. We were so excited, had all this renewed faith. Uh, and unfortunately, Cult of Chucky just really dropped the ball for me. I'm putting it in batteries not included. It's nowhere near as unwatchable for me as Seed of Chucky. There is some merit to the movie, but I've given it quite a few chances. I, there's certain things about it that I enjoy more than I did the first time that I watched it, but overall, I still think that it makes a, a lot of mistakes just for what I personally want out of this franchise, my own selfish reasons. Uh, so Cult of Chucky follows up the story of Curse of Chucky with Fiona. I think Fiona Dorif is still really good in this movie. I don't necessarily like what they do with her character as much as Curse, but she's really good. I think that there is some pretty good kills. Again, the gore has turned quite a bit up. Uh, Don Mancini certainly ramped that up a lot whenever he took over the franchise. And I do think that there is some, some decent humor in this movie. But this movie, above any of the other sequels... Even over Seed of Chucky, I just felt like the writing for Chucky for Brad Dorif was kind of lackluster. I didn't feel like his lines uh, or the delivery or the, the intended humor was really all that good in this one. Like there's a sequence where three different Chuckies are talking to each other where some Chucky fans are probably laughing their ass off, but I just find it just to be kind of awkward the whole time. Something about the delivery of it's just, it's just off to me. I don't know what it is. It's the only movie that I feel that way for. Even Seed of Chucky, I don't feel that way for. Um, and I just... Narrative-wise, the rule that they kind of um, pull into this movie where Chucky can now enter multiple uh, unlimited bodies by saying one word, to me, it kind of breaks the franchise. It kind of breaks the, um, the whole struggle of the franchise. So for some, they kind of like the way that that expands his powers and expands the possibilities. And, and I do like what they do with it in the TV series. So retroactively, I'm a little bit more soft on it. But in this movie, I thought that it was ridiculous. I just didn't like that direction at all. That felt like really, really cheap writing. Like somebody just woke up one day and said, this would be cool. And they wrote it and it just made its way into the movie. So Cult of Chucky, it's aged a little bit better for me than Seed of Chucky, but it's still not a movie that I like very much. Now we are at the remake, the definition of a love or hate movie. Uh, this is a movie that I was a big champion for. Uh, I mean, there was the TV series that was rumored at the time, and then they had this remake through MGM because MGM had the rights to the original film. And I'm somebody that really does support remakes. I'm not somebody that shits on the idea of remake. I always love seeing whether or not they can do something interesting with the classic property or not. More times than not, they don't, but I always like the possibility. And so I was really excited for this one. And I'm going to put it and hide the soul. Because I think the biggest problem with this movie is that it doesn't have the soul of Child's Play. You know, that wasn't intended when I <laughs> titled that middle, uh, that middle rung there, Hide the Soul, but I think it fits that movie quite well. I think that the kills are fucking awesome in this movie. I think that uh, the storyline regarding Andy and Chucky's relationship is really interesting. It's something different. And that's something that I always really want with a remake, especially if you're going to remake a classic like Child's Play, is you better do something different. Don't just go beat for beat what we already have. We already got that movie, motherfucker. Don't do it. And they did that. They did something very different with this. Uh, I liked the whole AI Chucky angle. 
And so I really enjoyed the story of this movie and most of the characters in it as well. I thought it was a really solid slasher film. The big problem with the movie is that I don't really like this version of Chucky. And that's really hard to get past when you're watching a child's play film as if Chucky's the problem. I think that the design of the doll is horrendous. I thought that all the way through the trailers, but I was holding like two fingers up. I'm like, please, God, please, please tell me that the trailers are just, they're misleading me and in action it's going to look better. And it really doesn't. I, for the life of me, don't understand why they went with that design for the doll. I think it's laughably bad. And as much as I love Mark Hamill, especially as a voice actor, and I think he does his best, they don't really give him a whole lot to work with. And so when you're doing this wildly different interpretation of Chucky, this iconic character that people adore, you better hit the soul of the character. And I really think that they missed that. So unfortunately, it's a movie that I do like. I do defend. I do think that it's better than a lot of people give credit for. And I actually would like to see a follow up because I think if they fix the doll, you could really fix most of my problems with the movie and possibly have a great sequel. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Uh, Child's Play fans just didn't have any interest in this and, you know, for various reasons. And, and that's fine. But for me, we have the movie. And my opinion of it is that it's perfectly fine. It's got a lot more going for it than people give it credit for. But it's solidly in the middle of this franchise. And now we are at the TV series, of which we're only one season in, so you know, it's not a complete story yet. That's why I don't typically include TV series with uh, movies and rankings, but here I think it fits a little bit more. And I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would the, the Chucky TV series. I was worried about how much they were going to have to pull back on Chucky, how much they were going to have to pull back on the violence and the, the profanity or anything like that because it was on TV. And much to my surprise, they were able to do quite a bit because of the time slot that they had. So... I liked the story. I liked the way that they had kind of a going back to the basics of this kid that finds the doll and Chucky's trying to build this little fake friendship with him. And there was some nice twists and turns throughout it. I'm going to stick it under good guy. I really did like it. And depending on where they pick things up in season two or however many seasons we have of this show, this has potential to go up or down, obviously. But for right now, I was happy with a lot more than I was not happy with. You know, there were certainly some things here and there that bugged me. Uh, I don't necessarily remember the characters' names, but there was this blonde girl who was like the worst bully of all time that they just really hammered into your head the first couple episodes. What an insufferable, miserable person this was and made you hate them. And I don't think they did a good enough job at changing that for the arc that they had of that character. She was just suddenly friends with all the protagonists that she was a complete bitch to. And I struggled with that for a while. Uh, there's a central relationship in the show that was obviously very important to Don Mancini. You know, Don Mancini is a gay man, if you didn't know that. Uh, and so the main character, I believe I read somewhere that he kind of wrote the main character as the teenage version of himself. So there's a central relationship there that's very important to the story. And I think it was just the acting maybe of the two actors that I never quite bought into it. Uh, they're very young actors. They're good for most of the show. It was just the relationship stuff that I had a little bit of trouble buying into. Uh, and I didn't really like any of the conclusions regarding any of the characters in the finale. The finale was my least favorite episode of season one. Uh, I think that uh, everything that they set up, I didn't necessarily like the way that they either concluded those stories or left them hanging until season two. Uh, Andy and Kyle, when they introduced them into the show, I thought it was awesome. And then the way that they decided to use them in the finale, I didn't really like the way that they used them. Uh, I didn't feel like it was enough of them. And there's a bit of a tease or a question mark regarding Kyle's fate that I thought was unnecessary. I did not like it all, even though I respect the horrific balls it takes to, to do that to the character. I did not like it all what they did to Fiona Dorff's character of uh, Nika. And um, I don't quite know where that storyline's going, of course. When I see season two, maybe I'll change my mind on that. And uh, apparently they're getting the same crew back together for season two as far as these kids. But I don't quite think it makes sense to keep the kids around. I think that it would make more sense to have this be... You know, the, the OG characters are the recurring characters and a, Chucky goes to different towns or something like that. Which, again, I, I can't say for sure until I see season two. But all I have to go off of is what I've seen. 
but uh, it seems a little far-fetched that these kids are going to follow Chucky and this storyline to a new city. So we will see, but I did enjoy Chucky Season 1 quite a bit. Uh, I covered every single episode, too, so if you're a fan of it, uh, I'll put a playlist up here. Check out all my review coverage of the show. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please click over here and check out my Friday the 13th tier list, and I'm also going to put my playlist of all of my Child's Play reviews so you can see my more in-depth thoughts on all of these movies and the TV series. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.